All right, the math professor is on the air. As so often happens in our modern life, I find myself pushed up against the deadline of starting class. All right. And there we go. We're sharing. We're sharing and we're walking. I ran up a very against a very strange phenomenon. Uh uh, I discovered that there was no chapter 21 presentation in the book, and so I went to the Pearson Education site, I looked it up, and there was no 20, uh, uh, chapter 21 uh, fifth edition presentation there either at all. In fact, when you try and click on that, they send you to the 21st chapter presentation from the 4th edition. So here we are. We have a, a, uh, uh, we have the presentation from the 4th edition. And boy, do I feel happy and excited about that. That's my story anyway. I'm sticking to it. Uh, all right, so the uh, 21st um, uh, uh, chapter 21 inspection principles and practices. Um, We'll talk about inspection fundamentals, sampling versus 100% inspection, automated inspection, when and where to inspect, and, and analysis of inspection systems. All right, so inspection is defined as the means by which poor quality is detected and good quality is assured. Traditionally, this uses uh, labor-intensive methods, usually a, an, a, a human inspector inspecting either 100% or a sampling of uh, the parts or products. So sampling inspection is common Manual inspection is usually performed after the parts are already made. Uh, well, it's very hard to inspe inspect before the parts are made. If a defective part is produced, it's going to be too late to correct that during the regular processing. So our defective parts already made have to be scrapped or reworked to make them acceptable. There are new quality control approaches address, addressing these problems. Uh, one approach is 100% automated inspection rather than sampling inspection that uses manual methods. Um, so we can have online sensor systems inspecting during or immediately after processing. We can have feedback control from that sensor data to the manufacturing process. So and we also have software tools 
that can be used in that kind of statistical uh, pro uh, uh, processing control. And uh, there are more and more, we have advanced inspection and sensor technologies. So we have CMMs and machine vision. All right, so what types of inspection do we have? First, we have inspection for variables. Uh, in this case, one or more characteristics of our part or product are measured. Now, this does require having the appropriate measuring instrumentation. Um, we can also have inspection for attributes. Uh, in that case, our part or product is inspected to decide whether it conforms to the accepted quality standard. Sometimes this is based on the judgment of the inspector. Sometimes we're using a gauge. Um, and sometimes it just involves counting the number of defects. Uh, okay, boy, I'm hoping you can read that. This is table 21.1. Examples of inspection for variables and inspection for attributes. Inspection for variables. Measuring the diameter of a cylindrical part uh, in fact, I would say measuring any measurable attribute, uh, or I should call it a characteristic, since we're making that distinction from attributes. Measuring the temperature of a toaster oven to see if it is within the range specified by design engineering. Measuring the electrical resistance of an electronic component. Measuring the specific gravity of a fluid chemical product. Okay, so in other words, we have to measure physical characteristics when we're inspecting for variables. Inspecting for attributes Gauging a cylindrical part with a go-no-go -go gauge to determine if it is within tolerance. I would actually argue that that is inspecting for a variable. Determining the fr fraction defect rate of a sample of production parts. Okay, that is inspecting for attributes. Counting the number of defects in an automobile as it leaves the final assembly plant. Counting the number of imperfections in a production run of carpeting. Okay, so any um, attributes are going to be things like uh, quality of finish on a product, quality of a paint job, uh, the look of a product, right? Uh, they, and an automobile might be assembled correctly, but one plate is on and it looks a little crooked. Um, uh, could be a problem as far as attributes go. The inspection procedure. The first part is presentation. The item is presented for examination. Sometimes this is done. The worker must bring the part or product uh, to the inspector. Sometimes the inspector has to be called over to where uh, the uh, worker is, is working or possibly the worker puts the part or product on 
a table or uh, a shelf where the inspector comes through periodically and does his inspections. Step two, examination. Consists of measuring or gauging a quality characteristic or searching for and counting defects. Okay? Three, step three is the decision. Is the item accepted or is it rejected? Uh, part four, the action. The item is accepted or rejected. If it's rejected, can the item be reworked to make it a saleable or usable uh, part or product? Uh, there may also be action including adjustments of the manufacturing product uh, process to make sure that we're not um, producing uh, unsaleable or unusable parts or products. All right, how do we decide which features to inspect? We look at key characteristics. Okay, so inspecting every feature is unnecessary. There are certain features that are going to be more important. These key characteristics, or KCs, include matching dimensions of assembled components, right? In other words, if it doesn't fit in with the other assembled components, that's not going to work. The surface roughness on bearing surfaces or sometimes other surfaces. Straightness and concentricity of high-speed rotating shafts. Um, okay, so are the, um, are the measurements concentric? Finishes of exterior surfaces on consumer products such as cars. Uh, okay, so these might be the key characteristics for different products being produced. Of course, when we inspect, we're going to have errors. So errors can uh, occur in the inspection procedure, either during the examination uh, or the decision steps. It might be a type one error. That is when we have a good item that's classified as defective. And in industrial engineering, we call that a false alarm. It might be a type 2 error when a defective item is classified as good. In other words, a miss. All right, so our inspection errors we might have type 1 and type 2 inspection errors. So we have a decision of either accepting the item or rejecting the item. And the item can be either a conforming item or a non-conforming item. So if we accept the item and it's a conforming item, it's a good decision. I know, the class is so full. <laughs> if we reject the item and it's a conforming item, that again becomes our type one error or a false alarm. If we have a non-conforming item, 
and we accept the item, that is a type 2 error or a miss. If we have a non-conforming item and we reject the item, then that's a good decision. Uh, so, uh, Uh, so this is our, our basic matrix on decisions. Uh, often in industrial engineering, we'll call these good decisions hits. All right, so why do errors occur in our manual inspection? Well, for one reason, the inspection task itself might be very complex. Uh, another reason is we have uh, inherent variation in our inspection procedure, uh, right? This calls for having the inspection procedure work by the standard Uh, in a standard way, uh, using a standard work procedure. We may have a judgment required by the inspector on, uh, uh, on the, the inspection. Is that not open over there? Okay. Uh, okay. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background here. Mental fatigue is a possibility. Uh, an error made in judgment uh, because our inspector is tired. And we might have inaccuracy in our measuring or gauging in instruments. Uh, the best practice is to have a routine for checking the accuracy of our instruments at intervals. All right, so why do errors occur if we have an automated inspection? Well, the first, again, is complexity of the inspection task. Um, Uh, the second is resolution of the inspection sensor uh, affected by the gain or any other sensitivity adjustments. Okay, maybe we've been getting too many uh, uh, misses and so we adjust the sensitivity upwards uh, or uh, excuse me, downwards. Could be equipment malfunction, or we might have bugs in the computer program that control the actual inspection procedure. So, let's talk about inspection accuracy. Accuracy is the capability of an inspection procedure to avoid type 1 and type 2 errors. So the measures of inspection accuracy are P1 is equal to the probability that a conforming item is classified as conforming. P2 is the probability that a non-conforming item is classified as non-conforming. So, therefore, our probability of inspection errors, the probability of type 1 error is going to be equal to 1 minus P1. I should have uh, mentioned that P1 and P2 are between 0 and 1. 
they're a probability proportion. The probability of type 2 error is equal to 1 minus P2. And our actual fraction defect rate equals Q. Um, uh, which is also between 0 and 1. All right, so what is the difference between inspection and testing? Inspection is used to assess the quality of a part or product relative to design specifications. Testing is used to assess the functional aspects of the product. Does the product operate the way it is supposed to? Will it operate in environments of extreme temperature and humidity? Uh, in our quality control testing, the item is observed during actual operation or under conditions that might be present during operation. Okay, so when I was working at the Corpus Christi Army Depot, certain parts were operationally tested, such as transmissions, gearboxes, and engines. So they had test cells where they were run up to operating speeds to make sure that they weren't overheating, there was no interference, excessive noise, etc. Sampling inspection, we can do variable sampling. That means that the mean value of the quality characteristic of interest is compared to an allowed value. Uh, so that batch is re rejected if the mean value compares unfavorably. We can also have attribute sampling. Uh, if the number of defects in the sample is greater than the acceptance number, the batch is rejected. The allowed value or acceptance number is chosen so that the probability of rejecting the batch is small unless the quality level is indeed poor. Um, okay, words to live by. More on acceptance sampling. In the construction of an acceptance sampling plan, the supplier and customer must agree on the following specifications. First, the acceptable quality level, or AQL. A quality level that is less than perfect, but deemed acceptable to the customer. Um, So a quality level that is less than perfect but deemed acceptable to the customer equals Q naught. Lot tolerance percent defective or LTPD, a lower quality level that is deemed unacceptable is equal to Q1. And of course, we have to keep in mind our possible statistical errors in sampling. Type 1 error is rejecting a batch of product that is equal or be better than the acceptable quality level. So in that case, the actual Q is less than or equal to Q naught. Uh, the probability of a type 1 error, or alpha error as it is known, is called the producer's risk. The second 
type of errors is type 2 errors, accepting a batch of product whose quality is worse than, than the LTPD. All right, so the actual Q in this case is greater than or equal to Q1. And the probability of type 2 error, which is also called beta error, is called the consumer's risk. The supplier and consumer must agree on these risks. All right, so when we're talking about inspe inspection accuracy, for batches, we have our decision to accept the batch or reject the batch. If it's an acceptable batch and we accept the batch, that's a good decision. If we reject the batch when it is an acceptable batch, that is a type 1 error or producer's risk, an alpha error. If it is an unacceptable batch and we accept the batch, that is a type 2 error, a beta error, the consumer's risk. And if we reject the batch when it is an unacceptable batch, it's a good decision or a hit. So when we design an acceptance sampling plan, it's based upon the agreed values of the acceptable quality level, the LTPD, producer's risk, alpha, and consumer's risk, beta. The values of the sample size, QS, and acceptance number, or allowed value, NA, can be determined. The operating characteristic curve, or OC curve, for a given sampling plan is equal to the plot of the probability of accepting the batch as a function of the fraction defective rate, Q, in the batch. The average outgoing quality curve, or AOQ curve, for a given sampling pl plan is equal to the plot of the mean quality level passing through the sampling th plan. All right, so our operating characteristic curve uh, is, well, this is a typical operating characteristic curve. So for a given sampling plan, it's going to show the probability of accepting the lot for different fractional defect rates of incoming batches. So our alpha error lies where the acceptable quality level rises to meet the operating characteristic curve. The difference here is our alpha. Our LTPD or lot tolerance percent defective comes in where uh, where that rises to meet the OC curve and then the beta error is the percentage or, or the yes the percentage uh, between zero and where that meets, meets the operating quality curve. Operating characteristic curve. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah.
the average outgoing quality curve, the AOQ curve for a given sampling plan shows the quality level of the batch as it ex exits the inspe inspection plan. All right, so here we have our fraction defect rate against our average outgoing quality. Our AOQL is the average outgoing quality limit, the maximum average defect rate of the batch and corresponding incoming defect rate Q. One hundred percent manual inspection. In principle, the only way to achieve one hundred percent acceptable quality is to use one hundred percent inspection. Oh. Sorry about that, class. Two problems happen when we use 100% inspection uh, and we're performing it manually. First, the inspection cost per part is applied to every part in the batch rather than a small portion of the batch, which would be a sample. And we have the errors, both type one, type 1 alpha error and type 2 beta error that accompany human inspection. Uh, all right, so our operating characteristic curve in 100% inspection, uh, theoretically, the probability of accepting the batch in 100% inspection is 1.0 if the quality is better than the acceptable quality level and zero if the quality level is worse than the acceptable quality level. So we have our two problems with 100% inspection when we perform it manually. First is the expense of inspecting every part. Second, the errors in the inspection procedure, and that would be type 1 alpha errors, type 2 beta errors, both uh, inherently in, in that. All right, so that makes it look very attractive to go to automated inspection. Automation of one or more steps in the inspection procedure. Uh, one, automated presentation of parts to a human inspector. Okay, so in that case, the human inspector is performing the examination and decision, right? So the automation is only to get the part from point A to inspection point B. Two, we have automated examination and decision. So we have manual loading for presentation and unloading. And Type 3 is complete automation of the entire cycle. Presentation, examination, and decision. Uh, Brenda, is, is that all of them? Oh, one more. Oh, man. But, of course, we should remember, errors can also occur in the 100% automated inspection. We have a relationship between the sensitivity of an automated inspection system 
and the probabilities of type 1 and type 2 errors. P1 is the probability of a conforming item is correctly classified. Okay, so uh, uh, our, prob uh, our probability one, our fractional proportion of probability increases when we have uh, low probability of, defect, of detecting defects and low sensitivity. But that gives us increased probability of type 2 error. P2 is the probability that non-conforming item is correctly classified. Okay, so we get an increase in our P2 when our probability of detecting defects is high and our sensitivity adjustment is high, but we get an increased probability of a type 1 alpha error. So in automated inspection, our full potential is best achieved when it is integrated into the manufacturing process, 100% inspection is used, the results of our uh, inspection procedure lead to positive action. So in that case, we're talking feedback process control that allows compensating adjustments in the process to reduce the variability and improve the quality. The other uh, method is parts sortation, where defects are separated from the process output. All right, so here we have feedback process control. We have our incoming work parts, our manufacturing process. We have an automated inspection without going parts. And we have feedback from that automated inspection to the process. You notice that the symbol for the process is a circle and the symbol for inspection is a square. These are standard symbols in manufacturing and industrial engineering. Then we have sortation into two or more quality levels. So we have our incoming work parts, our manufacturing process, our automated inspection, and it separates the parts into acceptable parts and defects. All right, so we have offline and online inspection. Offline inspection is performed away from the manufacturing process and that's usually after a time delay. Online inspection is performed when the parts are made either as an integral step in the, our processing or immediately afterwards. So we have, can have online in-process inspection performed during the manufacturing process or online post-process inspection, which is performed right after the process. Then we have offline uh, inspection. So we have our incoming work parts, our manufacturing process, our output items, and then we have a sample taken off 
and after some amount of delay, inspected, and there's a decision to accept or reject. So in this case, it is performed away from the manufacturing process, and we usually have a time delay between that process and the inspection. We can have online in-process inspection. In that case, we have our incoming work parts, our manufacturing process, our inspection is embedded in the process, and then we have our output. So the inspection feeds back the data from the inspection to the process to do real-time corrections of the processing of the part or product. So our inst inspection procedure is performed during the manufacturing operation and it allows for corrective action even on the current work unit. The online post-process inspection, we have our incoming work parts, our process, uh, that goes to the inspection, the inspection gives feedback data to the process, and we have a part sortation where the acceptable units are output and defects are sequestered away. In this case, our measurement or our gauging procedure is immediately following the production process. Uh, on, it's called online because it is integrated with the manufacturing workstation and the results can influence immediately the production process for the next work part. All right, so the, let's discuss product inspection versus process monitoring. Online in-process inspection is more feasible for process variables than for product variables. Um, process monitoring for product quality relies on the assumption of deterministic manufacturing. In other words, the process is in statistical control. The process capability is good, and that cause and effect relationships between process variables and product quality are known, and we have mathematical models for those relationships that we have already derived. A distributed inspection versus final inspection paradigm. In distributed inspection, um, our inspection stations are located along the line of workflow. So the most extreme way to do this is to have our inspection and sortation located, located after every processing step. Uh, what is more cost effective is that inspections are strategically placed at critical points in the manufacturing sequence.
So our final inspection is one comprehensive inspection immediately before shipment to the customer. Uh, of course, that may allow us to hide uh, uh, or may allow defects to be hidden. Quality conscious manufacturers combine the two approaches. So, for final inspection, we have our flow of work parts or products. They go to each unit operation and as, uh, as each process goes on, we have the good units passing through and bad uh, units that are defects are, are being sorted out. This goes all the way down because both our good parts and our defects are being passed through every process. Then at the very end, we have our inspection and sortation where good products are passed through and defective products are sorted out. Whereas in a distributed inspection, our flow of parts or products is coming through. We have both good units coming through and bad units, but at each inspection point, only good units are passed through and bad units are sorted out. So, when we do analysis of the uh, inspection systems, first we have the effect of the defect rate in serial production. Two, we have the final inspection versus distributed inspection. And three, we have inspection versus no inspection. So what the equations tell us, or what the math tells us, uh, is that our distributed inspection and sortation reduces the number of parts that are processed in the sequence of production operations as compared to one spot final inspection. Okay, so Having bad parts or defective parts or products sorted out during the process means we're doing less processing on products that ultimately we're not going to be able to sell without rework or having to scrap them. As the ratio of unit processing cost to unit inspection cost increases, the advantage of distributed inspection over one final ins inspection is going to increase. So in other words, if we have high processing costs compared to uh, uh, unit inspection costs, Having a distributed inspection makes more and more sense. Partially distributed inspection is less effective than fully distributed inspection in, in reducing waste. But if the cost of inspection is high and the cost of processing is low, that is going to matter less and less. Our law of diminishing returns 
operating in, in distributed inspection systems, additional inspection stations are going to yield less savings. Now, depending on the type of product, we may need more or less inspection. Uh, for example, on uh, aircraft and aircraft parts and components, we have a lot of inspections, Be, uh, uh, particularly of critical systems. Uh, but the cost of failure of aircraft systems is extremely high. So, uh, so having more inspection is not a problem. All right. Furthermore, inspections should be performed immediately following processes with a high fraction defect rate. All right, so if we are likely to have failure of a process, it's very good to have inspection right after that. We should also perform inspection right before, prior to high cost processes. So we don't want to put defective parts or products into something that costs a lot of money processing wise. If it's got a problem, we want to skip that. Either no inspection or 100% inspection is more appropriate than sampling inspection. Uh, which, so whichever of those is better depends on the relative values of our inspection and sortation cost versus damage control. In other words, defects that pass through the inspection plan. And thus, we discuss chapter 21. Now, uh, some personal thoughts on inspection. I've mentioned before in this class and even in this lecture that I worked uh, for a time at the Corpus Christi Army Depot. At the Army Depot we did MRO work, maintenance, repair, and overall work on helicopters and helicopter parts and components. Um, but one of the difficulties we had was that the inspectors had gained too much power and were actually uh, driving the process in some places that uh, were detrimental to our overall uh, process. Uh, for example, we would have good parts that had been passed by inspectors installed on helicopters and pass and the installation also passed by inspectors but other inspectors would come along and say no I don't like the look of that part it has to be removed and it has to be sent to be painted or uh, or they would require some other thing so we have to be careful in defining the job of the inspectors, that they are not going to just go wild uh, uh, 
once they have a bit of power and, uh, and create problems in the system. Uh, okay, so let me look here. All right. Just as I suspected, young Marcy is our sole auditor. So, Marcy, do you have any questions? No, I don't. That's too bad because this is going to be a short class today with that kind of attitude. Uh, uh, okay, well, uh, that's all I have prepared for today. Um, we will talk about uh, inspection methods and possibly do some, uh, uh, some problems for next Monday's class. So, uh, so I bid you adieu. <laughs> uh, have fun, Marcy. Talk to you later. Okay. Uh, oh, why must the show go on? The rule is purely not immutable. <laughs>